guys, welcome back, Mama Dr. Jones, and today we are going to be reacting to Grey's Anatomy. I love this show, uh, I loved this show. I got into the show a long time ago when I was in college. I probably won't even recognize any of the characters now. You guys wanted me to react to the finale of season 12. <laughs> Let's see what we can learn from Grey's Anatomy. Alex, Izzy wasn't your one true love. And even if- I do know who they're talking about, which is funny to me. So good to know that all the best people in this family are dead. She Derek's sister? Is Derek dead? I miss McDreamy. I feel like you should still be with Christina. Is she dead? Is everybody dead? I don't know who's dead. I just, I don't want you to get too attached. They're putting imaging up on white boxes and I don't know that anybody still does that. If you work in a hospital who still uses light box imaging, can you comment below? In my hospital, when we get imaging back, we look at it on the computer. I can't imagine there's still places that are using light box for their images, but Maybe it's some kind of specialty specific thing that I'm not aware of. I have three children, a big job. She has three children. See, you can be a surgeon and have children. Meredith Grey proved it. Uh, and me, I proved it too. I proved that also. Okay, yes. Tux is here, shoes there. Um, is there any- Aha! Someone is pregnant in this show. I was beginning to wonder because we are 15 minutes in and I've seen nothing OBGYN related so far and I was doubting you guys, but there we go. And not a piece of property for Christina to just hand over for safekeeping. I haven't told her, does she know? She's well, not you dead. call her. You okay? <sighs> yeah, I'm fine. Uh, I went upstairs and Amelia was in the bathroom. All right, look, let's get out of here. Okay. Huh. Oh. Oh, you're, you're having contractions. No, Braxton Hicks all day, Ben. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Come fine. on, sit down. Come on. No, we gotta get these. So what is Braxton Hicks contraction? Really the only thing that separates a not labor contraction from a real labor contraction is if your cervix is making progressive change. What people tend to call Braxton Hicks are what we usually call latent labor, which is kind of the early part of labor where you're having some contractions here and there. Might be uncomfortable, sometimes occasionally painful, but they're not in a regular pattern. They're not causing cervical change and they're not contractions that are latent. Labor. So yeah, that's a common misconception I see in my clinic is that Braxton Hicks contractions can never hurt. And I don't know that that's true. I think contractions kind of come on a spectrum and whether they are Braxton Hicks or real contractions just kind of depends on what else is going on in your body. Importantly, contractions that aren't causing cervical change when you're full term are not necessarily worthless contractions. So you're not just contracting all the time and it's not getting you anywhere, even if your cervix isn't changing. They are helping to move the baby's head lower into the pelvis, which is called engagement. They are helping to get baby positioned in the right way to get ready for labor. They're helping to soften the cervix, bring the cervix forward, just prepare the lower uterine segment, the cervix, and your body in general to have the baby. They are not pointless contractions, even if they're not really labor. Uh, oh, oh boy. Okay, so and that one looks God. real. Braxton Hicks can be uncomfortable. They're not usually overtly painful like that. <sighs> okay. 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 Yeah, it looks real. What are you saying? I'm you... saying that between your car and this house with heat, running water, blankets, I'm gonna stay here. Yeah, I'm gonna have this baby right here. April, no. Ben, come on. It's having a baby at home. People have done it in caves. As I discuss in my labor story, you sometimes are not completely rational when you are going into labor. I convinced my husband that it was a great idea if I drove myself to the hospital looking about like April. Maybe it is a good decision. I don't know. I'm gonna guess no since we're trying to make good TV here. Looks very dramatic. Um, maybe go wash your hands because I need you to give me an exam because my water just broke. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You're probably gonna see my vagina, which might be weird. Yeah, but uh, you know, I'm a doctor, so it's all good. This is always so annoying to me because technically the vagina is inside the body and nobody is seeing anybody's vagina. She actually means vulva. And I don't know, it really drives me nuts when I see 
people saying like, oh, we should use the correct anatomical things. Let your kids call that their vagina. And I'm thinking like, okay, but that's not what it is either. So maybe if we're gonna make a stand that we're using the right anatomical terms, then we should know the right anatomical terms. The outside of the body that they are referring to is the vulva. And you would have to look real close to see the vagina. I mean, maybe when the baby's head was coming out, you could see a little bit of it, but without doing a speculum exam, you're not looking at the vagina. Just a little rant, just a little rant, just a little rant. And let's wrap it up. Sorry, I just, I, I can't, I don't know what I'm- well, Come on, you've done a pelvic before. I don't know what kind of doctor he is. I think he's probably a surgeon because they're all surgeons. Doing a cervical exam to check for dilation is not really the same as doing a pelvic exam. It's pretty difficult to do a cervical exam and check for dilation and be good at it. That doesn't mean he might not know a little bit of what he's feeling, but mm, that would be a little bit of a stretch for someone who is not doing this on a regular basis and who has no extensive training in it. It's a foot. Nah, that's bad. I feel a foot. Bravo, identifying that that is a foot. It wouldn't be a storyline if he couldn't tell what it was. No. It's breach. Footling breach. The baby is footling breach. That means coming out feet first. That is just about the least ideal way that you can choose to have a baby at home, especially, but even in the hospital. Frank breach is a little bit different, and sometimes babies can safely be delivered. Frank breach, obviously, sometimes footling breach babies are delivered safely. It's just that that is a presentation which is associated with an increased risk of head entrapment and difficult delivery. I were delivering a baby in someone's house, which I just would not purposefully be doing anyway, then that's probably number one on the I hope the baby doesn't present in this way list. Okay. Okay. And, and I feel a cord. No, no, no. No, no. Is, is there a pulse? Answer me! Okay, remember when I said number one on the list of ways that I would not want the baby to be presenting is footling breach? I lied. The cord is the number one way I would not be wanting the baby to present. So my baby's gonna die. No, it just means that it's not getting all the blood that it could be and that, that we have to get the baby out as fast as possible so we can get the pressure off the cord. So I need a C-section <sighs> as soon as possible. Yes. Okay, let me explain to you guys what's going on and why that is panic inducing to me. When you are not fully dilated and the head is not fully engaged on the cervix and the water breaks, if the baby is high in the pelvis, the cord can flow underneath the baby's head and come out first. Or in this case, if the baby is breech, there's nothing that is keeping pressure around the cervix, the cord can come out through the cervix in front of the baby. This is an emergency because as you can imagine, if the cord comes out first, so you have the umbilical cord through the cervix and baby's I'm gonna say head for the purposes of demonstrating this. It happens the same way in footling breach um, or breach at all. But if this cord has come through the cervix and the head is pressing on the cervix with contractions and as the baby moves down into the pelvis, that cord becomes compressed. This is called an umbilical cord prolapse and it is definitely an emergency. If you identify this clinically, so if I go in to check a patient whose water has just broken, or I'm in the process of doing an amniotomy, which is breaking somebody's water, and I feel umbilical cord, this prompts me to put into place everything for doing an emergency cesarean delivery because you have minutes of the cord being compressed to get the baby out. Now there's a few things you can do to help extend that time and keep the baby out of harm if you are trying to get to medical care and this happens outside of the hospital or you are trying to get things ready for the C-section. And one of those things is not moving your hand. So he immediately took his hand out and said, hey, we have to do a C-section. If this were me in that situation, my first thing would be, okay, I know this is very uncomfortable, but I feel the baby's umbilical cord and I don't want to move my hand because as long as I can keep the baby's head or whatever body part it is pressed up off the cord, keep the compression away from the cord, we can allow the baby to still have adequate blood flow, hopefully. You still need to emergently deliver this baby and if 
delivery vaginally is not imminent, meaning in the next few minutes, you should be proceeding with C-section. The choice to take his hand out and say, now we need to do a C-section here is probably not where I would have gone with that because that sounds crazy, but hey, we need a show, right? It's blood supply is cut off and it's going to die. Put your hand back, take the pressure off the cord. I can't imagine how incredibly scary that would be in her situation where she knows that every second counts and her baby's life is in danger. That is just absolutely, just horrifically terrifying to me. Borrow a car from someone, drive to the hospital, I don't know, find a way to get there. All right, now listen, there's no anesthesia. Okay, they're Ice doing is it. all we got, so the pain's, the pain's gonna be bad. Okay. Okay. No, this is a bad idea. No, there's no time, here. Right, you rotate the baby in utero, face down. No, I know the position will look different than you've seen. I don't understand why they're rotating the baby. If I were delivering this patient, so if somebody was in the hospital and had a cord prolapse and we noticed then that the baby was footling breech, we would be moving towards an emergency C-section and you wouldn't turn the baby before you did the delivery. You would just do a C-section and deliver the baby breech at the time of the C-section. and uh, <laughs> a scalpel. It's lidocaine! No. Hey, Warren, what do you have to pack her with? Uh, dish towels. This sounds like such a bad idea to me. This is a situation where you're putting a lot of risk into mom getting very sick, mom having massive hemorrhage, they're talking about what do you have to pack her with? And he says, dish towels. That means when you get into major bleeding, what are you going to do to help stop it? And after you're done with the surgery, what are you going to do to stop it? They don't have any anesthesia. That sounds horrific. He has a dirty scalpel, no surgical instruments. What is he going to close the incision with? The uterus has 500 milliliters of blood flow per minute. That means you're getting massive amounts of blood flow to your uterus and you can bleed out very quickly, swiftly, if you don't have a way to control bleeding. has no suture, no surgical instruments. This is such a bad idea. He is putting April at massive risk and I know that she's kind of pushing him into it, but I think that he should be telling her, we are not doing this. We're going to take pressure off that cord. We are going to do everything we can to get you to the hospital as soon as possible. But if we're really going to give you and this baby the best chance of surviving, we need to be in a hospital right now. What good is it gonna be if April dies or bleeds out on Meredith's kitchen table? That just seems like such a bad plan. But it's Grey's Anatomy, right? If you feel like you're gonna lose me if I'm bleeding out, you you make sure that this baby is okay. Oh, no, 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 April, do not, Ben, don't listen to her, okay? You save her. I'm glad they brought this up. I often hear people say like, if we're in a situation where it's me or the baby, save the baby and those situations really don't come up very often, like ever. Like I don't think I've ever had a situation in my career that I had a full-term viable baby and I had to choose between saving mom's life and saving the baby's life. Because often saving mom's life comes along with and is like hand in hand with saving the baby's life and you're doing the best you can for both of those. I feel for April because of course she feels that way. That's her baby. I just can't in my head come up with a way that he would be having to choose between stopping her bleeding or saving the baby because the baby would be out at that point. Now, I guess if the baby came out and it was sick and floppy and needed attention, then there's only one of him who is going to resuscitate the baby versus stopping her bleeding. These are all big, bad questions and I just can't see how this is going to end well. <laughs> Okay. 
Did he put hand sanitizer on it? I'm terrified. I am terrified right now. Oh my God, I can't watch this. Okay, hey. That is horrific. I don't know what point your body would just cease to function and you would pass out from pain. I cannot imagine that that would be anything that anybody could tolerate while conscious. I keep them all as evidence. So in this scene, you can see she's coming out of the ambulance. They have a ambu bag, which is breathing for her. When EMS, the ambulance arrived, that they intubated her, put a tube into her to breathe for her because she probably was not conscious or not very conscious. And that helps to protect her airway and oxygenate her. She's also wrapped up in this silver kind of puffy blanket and that helps to keep the heat in. Chilly environment in the field because of the rain and the weather presumably has lost a lot of blood and that helps to keep her body temperature up. getting inside and being evaluated as quickly as the mom because it's also been through an extremely traumatic situation. He shouldn't be standing out in the rain holding the baby. Somebody should be taking that baby and getting it inside to get medical care. And then it also, it looks really big. I know it's supposed to be probably full term, but it looks like a three month old. That's not what babies look like straight out of the womb. So if you guys watched the call the midwife video, that is more like what a baby looks like when it's first born. Not like this, especially not an emergent delivery by C-section in somebody's house. Just to get close to you that is not a newborn. She's stable. <laughs> she may be stable, but I'm still worried about her because I don't know how much blood she lost. There's still a chance she has injuries to her bladder or her bowel or her blood vessels that could cause problems in the near future. She also has a very high chance of infection, having had a C-section in a non-sterile environment with dirty kitchen instruments. She may be awake and doing well right now, but she's going to need to be watched very closely over the next several days to make sure she's not developing a fever or an elevated white blood cell count, which would make us worried that she has an infection, and to make sure that her blood count doesn't get too low that she requires a blood transfusion. I I think this is great. They have a great outcome. It's TV and that's so important to remember because situations like this happen in real life and I hope nobody watches this and sets unrealistic expectations that a C-section done in somebody's house would probably have a good outcome because my inkling is that that would not be the case. In this case, all is well, April is fine. The three month old that she delivered is also fine. Be kind to each other, to yourself. If you have any questions, things you wanna learn, things you wanna know about me, about OBGYN, about pregnancy, about parenting. Oh my gosh, we can talk about everything.